Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video I'm going to be explaining the difference between the break and the continue keywords that are used in C or C++. So the way we use break or continue is we go ahead and stick these in some sort of loop. And what both the break and the continue keywords do is they both tell the program to go ahead and stop running the rest of that loop for the current iteration. So in that respect, break and continue are the same. But they're different in the fact that break not only does it want the program to stop the rest of the code in that loop, it wants to have it break completely out of the loop and not do any more iterations through the loop. On the other hand, the continue keyword tells the program, hey program, I don't want you to run any more of the code that's in this loop for the rest of this iteration, but I do want you to go ahead and start back at the top again for the next iteration of the loop. So that's a general overview of the difference between break and continue. Now let's go ahead and write a little bit of code so we can actually see these two keywords in action. So to compare and contrast break and continue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three function prototypes. I guess first thing I should do is comment out this line since that's obviously not going to compile the way I've written that. That was just kind of a comment so we could kind of talk about the topic. But now I want to, above the main program, create three function prototypes and they're all going to be void return types because they don't need to return any information. The first function I'm going to call is is I'm just going to call this one regular loop. So this is just going to show what happens when we run a loop without the break or continue keywords. The next function I'm going to create is I'm going to create a function which I'll call break. And this is basically going to run through the same code that the regular loop function is going to do, but we're also going to place a break statement in this function as well. And then the last one, I'll just call this one continue and it will demonstrate running through a loop where the loop encounters the continue keyword. So let's go ahead and copy all three of these. We'll paste them below the main program so that we can define them. We'll get rid of all three of these semicolons at the end, and then we'll go ahead and put some opening and closing curly braces here for each one of those. So I'll copy this, paste it here, and once again for the continue method, let's go ahead and start with our regular loop. So at the beginning, we'll just go ahead and print out a statement and we'll just say something like regular loop. That way we know which function is being called when this prints out. And then we'll just put a new line here. And so the code inside of the regular loop function is going to be pretty simple. We're simply just going to do a for loop. And inside the for loop, we'll create a new integer variable called i, set it initially equal to zero. As long as i is less than five, we're going to do the logic inside of this loop, and then at the end of the logic, we're going to increment or add one to the value of i. So what do we want to do inside of our for loop here? Well, let's just do a couple things. We'll just do a cout message, and we'll say i is equal to, and then we want to see what is contained inside our variable i, and then we'll do a new line. And so all this is representing is it's just representing kind of the beginning part of the code for one of our loops. So I've got a for loop here, and this is just some code that's at the beginning. And the idea here is when I do a break or continue statement, I might throw that break or continue statement somewhere in the middle of our code. So I'll just say break or continue. And I won't actually put anything in this one since this is just our regular loop example. And then the idea is we might have some more code after this. And so to represent that, I'll just say do some more stuff with, and then we'll go ahead and print out the value of i once again. And then we'll do a new line. And so the idea here is we've got some code at the beginning. We have an opportunity to put a break or a continue statement, but since this is the regular loop function, we're just going to ignore that. And then the idea is after we kind of get halfway through the function, we could do some more stuff. So pretty simple. And then once we're done, we'll just print out a couple of new lines after the for loop is done for formatting so that we can kind of get a better picture of what's happening when we compare and contrast the three different functions that we're writing. So let's go ahead and copy this stuff now and let's go ahead and paste it inside of our break function so scrolling up here a little bit so now for this one I'm just going to change the name of the output here to say break loop. That way we know when we run the program that this is coming from the break function. And so we're going to do the same thing in the break loop, except for we're going to add a condition here and it will just be an if statement. And we'll say if i is equal to two, then we'll go ahead and call the break keyword. And we're going to do a really similar thing to this for the continue function. So let's copy everything inside of the break function. Then we'll go down to the continue function and we'll paste it in here. We'll change the title here to continue. And then we'll go ahead and put a continue here. So basically what's happening with all three of these functions that I've created is the same thing with just a couple things tweaked. So each one of them goes ahead and it prints its title and then it runs through this for loop and 
For the regular loop, we're simply just going to print out the value of i, and then we're going to print out some code that represents that we can do some more stuff. And then the break and the continue methods do the same thing as the regular method, except for they have this little extra check here. And if i is equal to 2, we're going to call the break statement for the break function. And if i is equal to 2 here, we're going to call continue for the continue function. So let's go ahead and see what the difference between all these are. So here in the main program, let's just go ahead and call the regular function. We'll run the code from that function and then we'll call the break function. We'll just compare those two right now. I'm going to save this file and then over here in my terminal I'm in a directory called break continue and if I type ls here I can see that I have this file inside of this directory called break underscore continue dot cpp. And so that's the C++ file that we're looking at right here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over so that you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So the break continue file is a C++ file. So to compile a C++ file we're going to do G++ and then the name of the file. And I can actually type BR and then enter the tab key. That will autocomplete my file name for me. And then I'll give it a minus O flag so I can give the executable a name. And I'm just going to name it BC, which is short for break continue. And I'll push enter. Oh, and it's complaining that I've got an undeclared identifier here, regular online. 12. So if you go to line 12 here, I typed regular and I should have typed regular loop because I didn't define a function called regular. I defined a function called regular loop. So we'll, we'll change that, save it. I'm going to enter the clear command to get rid of the text on the terminal here. And then I'll go ahead and just do the up arrow twice to get back to that code that I tried to run before. So we'll try to compile this one more time and it looks like everything went well. Now if I type ls, we can see what's inside of our directory. And notice I've got this new executable here called bc. So I can run this executable by saying dot forward slash bc. And we can see the output from the regular loop and the break loop. So let's go ahead and scroll this back over here. So notice the regular loop just executes normally like we'd expect a for loop to execute. It goes through the values from 0 to 4, which is the last time that i is less than 5. So it goes through 0 through 4. And for each one of those, it prints out the value of i. And then we see the code that kind of represents, hey, if this was a real program, we'd be doing some more stuff here. Since this is just a sample, we just have this silly little print statement for each one of these. So this kind of executes as we expect. i equals 0, do some stuff with 0. i equals 1, do some stuff with 1. All the way down to i equals 4, do some stuff with 4. So then we call the break function here. And so if we go to the break function here, we see, okay, well, if i is equal to 2, we're going to break. So we can see i starts at 0, prints it out. Then it says, okay, i is not equal to 2, so it skips this section. Then it says, okay, we're going to do some more stuff with 0 here. And then it does it again for 1, prints 1, says we're going to do more stuff with 1. And then it prints two here when it comes back to the top of the loop again, it says i equals two, and then it checks here, it says, oh, i is equal to two, so let's do the stuff inside of here. And then it looks and says, okay, I see the word break. That tells me to quit what I'm doing inside of this for loop here, so it never actually gets to this next line here. And since it's a break, it says, not only do I not want you to execute any more code within this loop here, I also want you to completely exit the loop, even though you still had some more values to go through. This is a break keyword, so we're just going to completely quit. And so you notice here that once we get to two, it breaks completely out, doesn't run through this code anymore, and it doesn't start back with i equals three. It just completely stops the loop. So now let's compare the break keyword here to the continue keyword. So going back to the top here, we'll just go ahead and comment out this regular loop function. And then after the break function, we'll go ahead and call the continue function. We'll save this file. I'm going to clear the text from the terminal by entering clear. And then I'll push up a few times till we get back to my instruction to compile the program. I'll push enter. So we've recompiled the program dot forward slash bc. So that way we can execute the program again with our new instruction to call the continue function. I'll push enter here. So now here at first it runs the break function. It does exactly like we saw in the last example. And then it runs the continue function. So going down here to the continue function, set up the same way as the break function here, except for when i equals 2, we run into the continue keyword. So let's see what happens. So it looks like from i equals 0 all the way to i equals 2, it's exactly the same as when we looked at the break function. So the only thing that differs between the code here and here are these two keywords. So the difference is the break keyword says, okay, we're going to completely stop this loop. We're not going to do anything else. And we're not going to come back to finish the next few iterations. The continue loop, on the other hand, simply says, I just want you to skip 
the rest of the code here for the current iteration. So we're on iteration two here, and we can see up above i is equal to two, that's where we got this, but then we hit this part, i is equal to two, and it says, okay, we're going to go in here, and we see continue, and it says, okay, skip all the rest of the stuff in the loop. But since this is the continue, we then continue back at the top of the for loop with i equals three and i equals four. So that's the difference between break and continue. Break says exit the loop completely. Continue says I want you to quit everything you're doing in this current iteration of the loop or basically skip the remaining code of the loop for this iteration but then come back to the top and check to see if there's any more iterations to do and if there are go ahead and do those. So anyway that's the difference between break and continue. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe.